Hi, today I want to talk a little bit about the ESP32 and the Internet of Things and how you can use your ESP32 as a internet sensor and store all the data you collected in ThinkSpeak. So first step to use ThinkSpeak is to sign up and create an account. So you have to use an email address and create your account. And after you have signed up and create an account in ThingSpeak, you can create a channel to store your sensor data. So you go to my channel to display all your channels. If you have one already created, then you click on create channel and give some name and some field information. That's all. So in my case, I use the max 6675. So I create a channel ESP 32 max 6675 and I only have one field that's the temperature and so I create a very simple channel. Then you save the channel and then the important point for the programming are the API keys. So you go to API keys and take the right keys for your coding for the ESP32. Then all you have to do is write the right key to the HTTPS calling. It's just one line and you can use the get functionality for HTTP to commit all your sensor data in the fields. I only use one field, so I only have one field in the get parameter. So we can compare the two API keys, one on the coding side and as you see one on the ThingSpeak web side, you also see the same API key. So that fits together and we can go on to get our sensor data and calling up the ESP32 to store the sensor data in the web cloud. So before we go deeper in the code, first just flash the program in our ESP32 and we don't have to forget to close our debug window and then flash a new version of our code and let's see how we can store our data and also analyze our data in ThinkSpeak. So I open up a debug window with PuTTY just to display all the UART information that's sending out by the ESP32. And then we can compare the ESP debug information with the live view of the ThingSpeak website and the channel data that are collected. So let's start by pressing the reset button on the ESP32 to start the code. And we can see the first thing is to connect to the Wi-Fi connection. Then the sensor data is collected for the MAX 6675 and the temperature temperature data are sending out by HTTPS and the ThingSpeak API is responding by a message. And then the same thing is repeated every 60 seconds. So we can see one data collection, one sensor data and then the another. ThingSpeak is responding a little bit with delay but that's total okay for our purposes. And the delay is only by analyzing the data, not by collecting the data. And here I have also a time-lapse video for you to so show the long-time sensor data collecting with ThingSpeak. So we can have a look at what's responding time for our sensor and temperature. And I use my computer output fan for uprising the temperature a little bit with the sensor and also my body heat to gain up some temperature. And then I let the temperature again cool down to go down to my lab temperature. So it's nice to see the temperatures rising over the time and also falling down. So 
So before we go a little bit deeper into the programming code, I first show you the wiring for the Max 6675. And it's an SPI bus driven temperature sensor. So we use the ground and VCC pin and also the slave out or MISO pin for the ESP32 and the client select line and also the clock line. And they all go to to GPIO pin 19, 18 and 5. And the UART converter goes to the RX and TX pin in crossed connection. And we also connect the same ground potential. And for resetting, I use a resistor tied to VCC or 3.3 volt to the enable pin. And also I use the GPIO pin 0 to reset the ESP server. 32 to flash mode. And just a small episode from my programming, why I can show you an Arduino example. I have a little bit trouble with using Arduino and Wi-Fi programming for the ESP32. So I can show you here, um, I updated to the latest Arduino version of for the ESP32. And I use the standard Wi-Fi example. And as you see here in the debug window, there's not one single output line uh, over UART. The chip just froze up. And I don't know why this is so. And I don't have the time to debug everything in ESP32. Maybe if you have some um, help for me, so please write it in the comments. But I'm really sure my ESP32 is working with Wi-Fi because I use the Eclipse IDE and the standard C example for HTTPS calling and it works total fine for me. So I think there must be a error in the Arduino IDE C wrapper. But this is a special problem maybe with my chip because I um, read all the comments for Arduino and most of the people says their chips are working fine. So unfortunately, it's only a single problem. But I get my adapter so I can show you maybe another chips in the future videos. So let's go through the code. It's based on the HTTPS request example from Espressive and ARM. So I don't show every detail, just the small changes I've made. So I embed the ESP32 hardware abstraction layer from Arduino to this to make it easier to connect via SPI bus. And then I also defined my API to SyncSpeak and added the SyncSpeak API HTTPS request into one line. And I also embed the coding for the Max 6675 chip. So you can see it here. We're starting up by connecting the GPIO ports and configuring them as outputs and driving them mostly high. Then we start by calling the SPI bus and attach some pins to the SPI. And then we only do a digital write. And then we set our client select line to low to signal the max 6675 that it can collect some sensor data. Then we write some dummy bytes over the bus because we don't use the MOSI line. We only use the MISO, the master in slave out and not the master out slave in line. And then we read the callback from the SPI bus over the MISO line. And then we signal the chip that we are ending our sensor data collection. And then we do some debugging. And then from the example, we see here that we are calling up the data reading and give some debug information. And then we're sending out our HTTPS request to our ThingSpeak API. And that's it. So let us compile our example and 
just flash it into our chip. So it takes a while because all the Wi-Fi instructions are very big inside the ESP, inside the ASP library. So if you do Wi-Fi, just take a little bit time to flash your chips. And we are ready in 35 seconds. So as always, all the code example you find in my GitHub page, look in the description down below. And thanks for watching today. And I hope you learned something and give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, if you want to remember all my new videos, just check the small bell button in your YouTube account to get the remember message for new videos. Thank you, bye bye and have a great day.